Thank you for uh, welcoming me, uh, me back to give you guys a sermon. Okay, it's been a while. I was actually supposed to give you guys a sermon last semester, but scheduling conflict and it was pushed to this semester. And I'm happy to be here. Um, as you could tell, my title for the sermon is Contribution, and we'll come back to this word um, later. Uh, as Dr. Lee said uh, in his um, announcement, a lot of you guys come to school hungry and you guys seem to go um, out to get food, bread, or whatnot. Just out of curiosity, how many of you guys had breakfast this morning? Oh, that's all, almost everybody, okay. How many of you guys are still hungry after breakfast? Okay, <laughs> all right, growing people. He's, these hands are growing people. Okay. All right. So let's go to our, our first verse for today. Okay. Our first verse is Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Okay. It reads, you are the salt of the earth, uh, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can, it be how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Now, you guys have seen this verse before, uh, most likely. And you probably came across this in your Sunday school or in your sermon of all the years of church that you guys have uh, been to, okay? But I don't know if you guys ever wondered, have you guys thought of what a saltless salt might taste like? Yeah? Maybe not elementary school, but maybe high school. Um, high school student, you guys should know the chemical makeup of a salt, table salt? Yes? Anybody? Who said that? Oh, okay, okay. My man over there. All right, sodium chloride. Okay. Do you know what the let what the uh, symbol is for sodium chloride? An ACL. Okay. An ACL. Sodium chloride. Okay. Doctor Sun taught you guys well. All right. Now, uh, sodium chloride. This is sodium is a metal. Okay. And chloride is a non-metal. And I always wondered, since this is a metal mixed with non-metal, if you lose the saltiness, maybe it'll taste a little metal-like, okay? And I've, as I was preparing for this, I researched if there's any salt substitute, and apparently there are um, salt substitute that is not NaCl using other metal, and they say there is that salt taste, but it tastes a little bit more metallic. And so I thought that was very interesting, okay? Now, then, where do we use salt, usually? Food. Okay, we use salt for food. Why do we use salt for food? To what? To keep it safe, okay. Anybody else? Okay. To taste yummy. To taste yummy, I like that answer. To taste yummy, okay. I want us to know that salt is used to enhance the flavor. The role of a salt is to enhance the natural flavor of the ingredient. It is not to change the ingredient but it's just to make it stronger and more pronounced in the dish. Okay? You can always appreciate uh, natural flavor, but with all the junk food and all the salt that is in the food that you guys are eating these days, I wonder if you guys could eat saltless food um, and appreciate that taste. Um, watching my daughter grow, she has been eating more and more salty food as time goes by. And it's really interesting, we never taught her this, but as soon as she had her first salty food, her reaction was, yeah, or mmm. Like even this morning, I gave her some um, kanjang and pop, and every bite, she was like, mmm, mmm. It was very interesting. And now, of course, she will still eat food that we prepare without salt, but there's a clear night and day difference between salt uh, with food, food with salt and food without salt, and her willingness to eat that and um, um, take that in. Long story short, you know, salt just makes uh, food taste better. Now I'm going to show you some picture that we usually put salt in. I wonder if you guys agree. Yes? yes? Tastes better with salt? Yes. Yeah, especially the yellow part tastes really good with salt. Okay? I don't know if you guys really like this. I like it. Okay? Yeah? Yeah. I'm sorry if you guys are hungry. I apologize. How about this one? Okay? Uh, the next one, ne uh, I don't know about the next one. Uh. <laughs> I wonder what the reaction would be for this one. <laughs> that was, actually, this was the expected reaction that I was expecting. 
Um, I don't know if you guys ever tried salt on a watermelon. Okay? If you put not too much, but if you put just enough, the watermelon will taste sweeter if you put salt in. And I found out that the reason why that happens, watermelon uh, naturally has some bitterness. And what the salt does, it, it counteracts. It means it shuts that off. So you don't taste that anymore. And so the sweetness just comes out more and it tastes sweeter. Okay? Now, there's another use for salt. And somebody said it. To what? To taste that, was, that was the first one. What was the second? To keep it safe. To keep it safe. Does anybody know a word to keep it safe? Mm -hmm. To preserve. Very good. Who said that? Okay, to preserve, okay? So, we use salt um, to preserve. And this is a method that people used long ago, before electricity, before electronics, before refrigerators and whatnot, okay? To do food preservation. And this method is still used today uh, to preserve food and make great tasting food at that, like beef jerky or hams, okay? Now, how does salt preserve food? Does everybody know? Has anybody tried to uh, pour salt on a cucumber? Okay. What happens to the cucumber if you pour salt on a cucumber? Hmm? Anybody had pickles? Yes, you guys have pickles, right? What does a pickle look like a regular cucumber? What hap what is the, what's the shape? It shrivels. Why do you think it shrivels? <laughs> okay. So what salt does, okay? It, it draws out water. It takes out water out of the content, okay? And that's why things shrivels up and get smaller, okay? Even in things and food that you think that there is no, um, um, there's no water, um, if you put salt in, you'll, get, you'll draw out whatever water is left in that food. And how does that preserve the food? Well, all living things on this earth requires water, okay? If you have mold, if you have bacteria, you want to see if um, the place that you found your mold or whatnot is watery or moist. Okay? If it's dry, nothing can, dr uh, nothing can grow. So salt draws out water. There's no water. So microorganisms, bacteria, those things cannot grow. And so you preserve the food that way. Okay? And here are some examples. Okay? Here's some sardine or fish uh, being salted for, for food preservation. I don't know if you guys, this is meat. Yum. You guys say this, but this turns into this. Okay? Now, see, now this is a little bit better. Does anybody know what this is? <laughs> yes, Brenda. Turkey. It's not a turkey. Anybody else? Yes, Justin. It's not chicken. Yes, Daniel. Meat. It is a meat. What kind of meat? Yes, Brian. <laughs> yeah, what, I, I don't know your name. Huh? Lucas. Oh, that's a great, a great guess, but it's not an ostrich leg. Okay, so? Huh? What was it? Pig. It is pig. It is ham. Uh, specifically, this um, brand is called a Hamon ham. And this one leg, this is a leg, one leg, costs about 1.5 to 2 million won. Okay, it is a very expensive ham. And this curing process for this ham also start with salt. They dry, out the, they dry out the meat, okay? And then once they dry out and get rid of all the water, they cure it and they preserve it for a year, maybe even two years before it is sold and being consumed. Again, I'm not this rich. I never had this ham before. But if you get a, a chance, um, try it out. Okay. Now. This is all great with, you know, enhancing flavor and preserving food, but there's certain fruit that I want to talk to you guys about um, in the Bible, okay, that I wish we could enhance um, their unique flavor and characteristics. Uh, the, fruit of the, um, the fruits that I'm talking about are the fruit of the Spirit. Have you guys heard of this before? How many are there? How many are there? Anybody know? There are nine. Who, who said that? Okay, there are nine. The, can you name all nine? Okay, all right. What are they? Love, uh -huh. joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
Oh, very good. Okay, here it is. Okay. This is from Galatians 22, 23. Okay, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, forbearance, or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Okay, maybe a visual will help. Here's a fun picture of all the fruits. Okay, so my question is this. Which of these fruit of the Spirit would you want to enhance with your salt? As Jesus called you to be the salt of the world, okay? Is it love? Is it joy? Is it peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, or self-control? Okay? So which one do you want to enhance? Now, from this question, um, a question should follow, uh, follow up is, how can I enhance the fruit of my spirit? And how can I contribute that fruit to my community? Okay. Now, you don't have to manage all the fruits at once. That would be too much. I don't think anybody could do all of it at once. But maybe you could focus on one or maybe two and try to nurture it and try to enhance that in your life every day and see where it leads to. I want you guys to understand that the fruit of the Spirit are interconnected, meaning they're all connected to one another that if you work on one, that will lead to a different fruit, and that will lead to another fruit, and it will be a domino effect, and eventually the entire fruit of the Spirit could be living in you, okay? Now, God has blessed us with this brand new building. Uh, we are very grateful, okay? And we should take up the responsibility to maintain and build up the school, to build up good culture, safe and welcoming atmosphere. Everyone here, in, uh, from first grade to 12th grade, even teachers and staff can contribute um, to this endeavor. Now, how do you contribute? I have some examples for you guys. So first one is kindness. How can I contribute kindness? It could be as easy as saying hello to one another uh, for the, um, to a person that you met for the first time that day. Maybe gentleness. It could be giving a smile to somebody. Okay, Just giving a smile, that's all it, that's all it takes. Peace, okay? It could be speaking gently, softly. My homeroom kids, speaking gently and softly, okay? Joy, it could be being thankful for what you have, not being jealous or envious of other people's stuff. Goodness, okay? It could be you giving your time to someone else when they come for help, and you generally want to help them. Not go like, oh, okay. Just say, welcome. All right? And love. Okay? Love. It could be encouraging one another, listening to um, each other rather than talking over them, or lifting each other up. Okay? Now, these are some examples that I could think of. But if you have your own, okay, and you have a specific fruit that you want to um, enhance with your soul, feel free to implement them. Um, I passed out a paper to your homeroom teacher. Okay, they're going to pass it out to you guys. Okay? We're going to take a few minutes. And what I want you guys to do on this sheet of paper is I want you guys to write a fruit of the spirit, one, maybe two, that you guys want to contribute to this school, to this community. Okay? On one side, you'll write the fruit of the spirit. On the other side, I would like you guys to write an action that you guys could take, like the example that I gave you, an action that you guys could take to contribute, how you could contribute that to your community. Are we clear? Do we understand what I'm asking you? Yes? No? One more time. On one side, I want you to write the fruit of the spirit that you like. Okay? And on the other side, I want you guys to um, write how you could contribute that to your community, like I said. Like, for example, um, for, like, for, um, what is it? For peace, you could speak gently or softly, okay? Uh, maybe not running around, walking, okay? For gentleness, you could give a smile, stuff like that. Are we clear? Okay. Okay, I think that's enough time, okay? If you guys didn't have enough time, you guys could spend the day uh, thinking about it and uh, writing it down. I would like, if you guys can, uh, I would like you guys to share um, in your homeroom which fruit you decided to use your salt on today. 
And I hope that each and every one here will help contribute to our school and make this community that is loving, joyful, peaceful, kind, good, faithful, gentle, full of patience and self-control. Let us be the salt of Ilsan's school. Let's pray.